Hello everyone, it's Dr. Sam Hurst and this is the 10th in our series of the October Gothics a Day Tempts the Vampire to Stay. As usual, I'm going to be introducing a book, giving you some idea of why it's important and then going on to give you some extra reading recommendations. Today we're firmly in the 19th century and we're heading to Scotland. The book that I've chosen is one of the first of those books that we can denominate as Scottish Gothic and it's James Hogg's The Private Memoirs and Confessions of a Justified Sinner. It's one of my favourite books of all time. Now, if we're thinking about the Scottish Gothic as perhaps being in part its own tradition, very much in, in woven with the British tradition more broadly, but having its own particular characteristics, we need to ask what those characteristics perhaps are. Now, critics have noted in the Scottish Gothic a particular connection with Scottish folklore. And although we don't find this uh, connection here really in this particular Hogg novel, it appears in lots of his other stories and there is a personal connection because his mother was a collector um, and of ballads and an oral storyteller. The other part um, that is very characteristic of the Scottish Gothic is a particular interest in very theologically rich texts and particularly looking at fairly extreme forms of Calvinism with a focus on soul and body duality and the inherent duality of man, that mixture of good and evil, and also on extreme forms of Calvinism pointing towards heretical stances such as that of antinomianism, the problem that we find in the justified sinner. Now antinomianism, in brief, is a very uh, sort of extreme form of Calvinism based on that Calvinist conception of double election, i.e. that we are predestined before birth either for heaven or for hell. So that's the double part. You're not just predestined for heaven, you're also predestined for damnation if you're not predestined for heaven. What happens in this book, what this antinomianism is, is that this idea of once you know that you're elect or once you are elect, there is nothing you can do to lose that election. And Robert, our protagonist, takes that very seriously. He, he always has a constant range of excuses for his behaviour, but he also believes himself to be safe because of his election. Now, just a brief introduction to James Hogg as well, because he's a very interesting writer and quite different than many of the other writers that we've been talking about, because he comes from a working class background. He was also known at the time as an Ettrick Shepherd, as the Ettrick Shepherd quite often, and it was one of the sort of pseudon pseudonymous titles under which he was published. Um, we see him being sort of forwarded and encouraged by Walter Scott in the early part of the 19th century and going on to have a wide ranging career. So he's interesting as a figure that sort of dismantles the conception that the Gothic is being universally produced by middle class people. And he adds some different flavour, often local flavour to his tales, including writing not only in English, but frequently in Scots and including depictions of working class Scottish culture in many of his works. But let's return to The Justified Sinner. What's it about? Well, it's interesting narratively. Narratively, It's split into two parts. The first part is told by a narrator who's trying to piece together the story of a man called George and what happened to him leading to his murder. And the second part is told by Robert, George's brother, who is really the, res the one who is responsible for his death. Now, George and Robert were born to the same mother, but it's debatable whether they had the same father or not. The mother and her spiritual advisor, possibly Robert's father, are part of a strict sort of very high Calvinist, broadly antinomian uh, group. And on the day that Robert believes himself to have his election confirmed, he first meets a demonic double called Gil Martin. And that's the start, as you can imagine, of a journey down a path into increasing acts of villainy, all fueled by this antinomian conception that his election is secure whatever he does. Now, that relation to Gil Martin becomes increasingly fraught, with Gil Martin not only taking on the aspect of Robert's face, but potentially possessing him or acting in his stead. It's 
a really interesting read, although I will warn you now it has a fairly tragic end. But it's fascinating both from a theological viewpoint and also just as a, as a really interesting, intriguing and gripping adventure. Now, if you enjoy The Justified Sinner by James Hogg, I'd recommend reading some of his shorter works, especially those which are tinged with these aspects of the demonic, such as Mr. Adamson of Laverhope and uh, The Brownie of the Black Hags. There's often an engagement with theology, with history, with Scots and with Scottish culture. So they're a fascinating, slightly different Gothic read. I hope that you enjoy them.